Hey guys, welcome back to another episode of Infamous. My name is Harmon, and today we are focusing on the 1993 Aurora Chuck E. Cheese shooting, which those two things usually don't go together, Chuck E. Cheese and shootings. Usually, Chuck E. Cheese is usually the place where kids go to have fun, and honestly, that's what they always should be known for. Maybe also known for not the greatest food, but <laughs> that's another story altogether but definitely not known for shootings, um, except this unfortunate uh, shooting that happened on December 14th, 1993 here in Aurora, Colorado. So on December 14th, 1993 at the Chuck E. Cheese here, a disgruntled employee who was fired from the Chuck E. Cheese not long before the tragedy occurred and he wanted to get back at Chuck E. Cheese for firing him. The perpetrator uh, was 19-year-old Nathan Dunlop. Uh, he used to work at the Chuck E. Cheese that the shooting occurred at, and Nathan Dunlop was fired from the store, the Chuck E. Cheese, only five months prior to him going there and shooting. According to him, he was wanting his revenge against the Chuck E. Cheese for him being fired. So unfortunately, four employees were shot and killed when Nathan Dunlop went in and started shooting. A fifth uh, employee was injured, but thankfully survived. But he ended up killing four of the employees there. So Nathan Dunlap was born Nathan Gerard Rochelle. That was his birth name, but apparently he changed it or went by Nathan Dunlap instead. Um, he was born on April 8th, 1974. So again, like I mentioned, he was only 19 when he committed the shootings uh, in 1993. I'm just gonna give you some history on him and uh, so that way you get kind of an idea of what he grew up with and what he was like. Um, so his mother apparently struggled with mental health issues, schizophrenia. Uh, twice during junior high school, Nathan attempted suicide. Um, and when he was 14, his dad asked a psychiatrist to look at him and the psychiatrist said that he was fine and that there was no treatment required, which is interesting. But before the shooting happened, he, he, had, he had some other crimes in his past. He committed several armed robberies when he was only 15 years old. He also spent time in a juvenile detention center for other crimes and overall was just getting in trouble quite often. Dunlap uh, began working at the restaurant in May of 1993 and was fired in July of 1993. So he only worked there for, you know, two to three months, give or take. And the reasoning behind him being fired was because he had a disagreement with his manager over scheduling issues. Um, and if you've ever worked at some sort of restaurant or basically almost anywhere uh, where they have different schedules, where they want people to come in at different times, uh, you kind of understand sometimes you don't always get the schedule you want or work the hours you want. So he was ultimately fired, according to what I read, because of some sort of scheduling issue with the manager he just didn't like or whatever. After he was fired, he told his coworkers that he wanted to seek revenge and hated the fact that he was fired from the restaurant. So if that doesn't show him having some premeditation, to me it sounds exactly like that. Um, he sounds like he was planning to get revenge and that's what he told his coworkers. Now you always wonder how come the coworkers didn't say anything. And you always hear that a lot of people or friends of, you know, someone who commits like a, a mass shooting uh, but a lot of the friends usually say that they didn't take them seriously or they didn't think they would actually do it. And unfortunately, I think in this case, I think that's what the coworkers probably thought. They probably thought, oh, it, he was just pissed off and you know said some things he didn't mean. Well, he meant them, you guys, because he committed the crimes. So let's get into the actual shooting. So 9 p.m. December 14th, 1993, Nathan Dunlap walked into the Chuck E. Cheese where he used to work at. He ordered a ham and cheese sandwich and played some games. Then he hid in a restroom at about 9.50 p.m. just before closing, uh, obviously to hide. That way he could jump out and ultimately ambush anyone there who was working. At about 10.05 p.m., uh, shortly after they closed officially the restaurant, he got out of the restroom and shot five employees that were there with his semi-automatic pistol. 
Uh, Dunlap first shot Sylvia Crawwell, who was only 19 years old. She was cleaning the salad bar area when she was shot. Um, she was unfortunately shot near the right ear and uh, killed instantly. 17-year-old um, Ben Grant uh, was fatally shot near the left eye while he was vacuuming. 17-year-old Colleen O'Connor dropped down to her knees as she saw him approach and pleaded for her life, but he, he didn't heed that and ended up shooting her directly in the head, um, killing her. Then lastly, uh, Dunlap forced the manager, 50-year-old Marge Kohlberg, to open the safe and to give him all the money that was in there. After she gave him the money, he shot her in the ear and then he shot her a second time, which was the fatal shot in the other ear. And the only survivor was Bobby Stevens, 20 years old. Um, he was out back taking a smoke break when he heard noises and thought it might be some kids um, popping balloons inside. As he made his way inside, near the kitchen area, uh, that's when he was approached by Dunlap and shot in the jaw. Apparently he pretended to play dead um, as he actually didn't die, so he pretended to, to be dead uh, in order to make it out of there. Stevens, who survived the shooting, made his way back outside to the neighboring apartment complex uh, and, and got help. But Dunlap escaped for the time being, made off with about $1,500 from the safe, uh, but eventually ended up getting found and caught at his mother's house about 12 hours later. So once he was arrested, he was found guilty and was convicted of four counts of first degree murder and I believe one count of attempted murder. Um, he was given the death penalty actually, um, but uh, as, some, as a lot of things go, uh, his death penalty case was uh, changed to life in prison without the possibility of parole uh, due to the fact that I believe Colorado's um, law has changed on the death penalty and so his death penalty case was changed to life in prison with no chance of parole. Is that really fair? Well, at the end of the day, at least he's not going to be able to come back out in public so I think that is a good thing. I don't know, how crazy is it that all these different shootings have happened so close to each other? Um, like I mentioned, if you didn't watch the earlier episode of the James Holmes theater shooting that happened in 2012, that was only 10 minutes up the road. And we're only 20 minutes away from Columbine, and we're only about 45 minutes away from where John Bonet, the little girl, um, was found dead in, in her house. So all these different things have happened really, really close together. Um, so a little disappointing for me and probably for you guys, but as this was, you know, 27 years ago, this location is not a Chuck E. Cheese no more. Um, it's turned into a Panera Bread. The location of this former Chuck E. Cheese, now Panera Bread, um, is located at 12293 East Iliff uh, Avenue in Aurora, Colorado. Obviously this is an active restaurant, so I can't just kind of peruse around back. Hopefully the front of it does it justice. Pretty incredible and sad, obviously, what happened, but 27 years ago, this was a Chuck E. Cheese and four people unfortunately lost their lives. They all had lots of their lives left to live and of course didn't deserve any of that. The manager also uh, was killed and she was 50, but the rest were all really, really young. Um, anyway guys, uh, I know this one's kind of a shorter uh, infamous video, but again, there's really not much else to see except the building where it happened at. So it's kind of hard to show you anything else. Um, but um, anyway, thank you guys for watching another episode of Infamous. My name's Harmon, and until next time, if you're new around here, definitely subscribe. A lot more uh, episodes coming of this series. If you have any suggestions on any other infamous crimes or people, or places for that matter, let me know in the comments. My name is Harmon, and I'll see you on the next one.